Oh, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and for today's video, I am doing a 24 hour readathon and more specifically a self care 24 hour readathon. <music> a self-care 24-hour readathon you may be asking well it is something that I made up myself <laughs> so uh, basically I got the idea because my fiance is going to be out of town for a couple days on a camping trip on a hiking trip with his friend and I'm gonna be by myself and I thought this is the perfect opportunity to do a 24-hour readathon um, like a really dedicated true planned out 24 hour readathon um, where I actually try to read as much as physically possible for me to read in 24 hours. So that was the original plan and then I thought why don't I kind of like make it semi themed around self care like I'm gonna be by myself for the weekend so I might just like indulge myself like eat my favorite foods and just like really have a very self-care kind of vibe going on um maybe i can like come up with some prompts that i can do stuff like that and then i i went on to youtube to see if anybody else had done something similar and yeah i'm not the first person to title something a self-care readathon but i have kind of looked over some of those other videos and they're not exactly the same as what i'm doing um i am doing mine in 24 hours um, but I did want to mention that I am not the first person to come up with this and there have been several other people who have done a similar themed readathon. So I wanted to shout that out um, even though I am doing something a little different. So being the very uh, type A person that I am, I kind of like made a note of all of the prompts I'm going to do and all my time schedules that I'm trying to do because I feel like if I actually time out by the hour, I will have a better chance of actually succeeding at being disciplined and reading as much as possible in 24 hours. And I thought I would be just really indulgent and kind of like do things that are really, really good for my own personal physical and mental and you know, overall well being. So it is currently Thursday night and the reason that I am doing this intro right now is because I am going to take some time tomorrow morning and kind of like prep for the actual readathon portion, which I'm gonna start Friday at 3 p.m., so tomorrow at 3 p.m., but I'm gonna use the whole of tomorrow morning and you know, kind of early afternoon to prep and kind of do some of the self-care things. So I'm gonna start bright and early, by going to a coffee shop, getting myself a little nice little coffee and doing just like a deep work session from 8.30 in the morning or 8 a.m. in the morning until 11.30 p.m. And then I'm going to a yoga class with my friend, which I'm so, so, so excited about. And then I'll come home and kind of tidy up, clean up my space to really just make it the coziest that it can possibly be for my 24 hour readathon. And then at 3 p.m. I will start reading with my first session. I'm going to try to do four reading sessions on Friday night um, with several breaks in between. Um, I'm kind of trying to build in those breaks in my schedule so that I won't be tempted like during my reading block, I won't be tempted to pick up my phone because I know that I will have a break at the end. I plan to end tomorrow night's reading session at 12.30 a.m. I might, you know, be feeling really great and like want to keep reading. And if that's the case, then awesome. I will read until I physically cannot anymore. But I'm just putting my, the end of my final session at 12.30. And then on Saturday, I think I'll really only get to three reading sessions. For the prompts that I found, I basically just went online and like looked at like lists of like you know, 50 things to do for self-care, stuff like that. And I came up with a handful of prompts that I want to accomplish. So some of these things are honestly really simple. They're like, make a cup of tea, light your favorite candle, do a face mask, eat your favorite foods, like just very simple stuff. Other things are like, do something physical. So I'm gonna be doing yoga. 
and I'm trying to drink five water bottles full. I have my water bottle that I always use. It's fairly large. I think it's like 32 ounces. So to try to drink five of those in the 24 hour period, um, that will be a pretty big challenge for me. And honestly, it just anything else that comes to mind that I want to do. Um, but those are some of the ones that I thought of right now. You know what? I'll also go ahead and tell you what I am reading and I do have several options. So the entire idea that I had for this readathon was that I have some super short um, books, some novellas that have been sitting on my TBR for a really long time. And I kind of wanted to do a 24 hour readathon where I just knocked them all out. So that really was the catalyst for this idea. But I also have a couple other things. So let, let's talk about it. Okay, first up, I have The Cement Garden by Ian McEwan. Ian McEwan is one of my favorite authors and I have several of his books that I have not read sitting on my TBR shelf and this one is very short um, and I do believe this is some pretty tough subject matter. I believe this is about some children that are abandoned in a house and it is described on the back as a riveting novel. It possesses the suspense and chilling impact of Lord of the Flies. So I I don't know too much about this, but I do think that some children are abandoned in a house and they have to survive on their own. Again, very short. Um, and I really like survival stories. I like stories that feature children as the main characters, um, especially if the piece of media is not necessarily made for children. I think that's really fun. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this, but I, like Ian McEwan, um, Atonement is one of my favorite books, but I've also read some of his stuff that I was just kind of like lukewarm to, so we'll see where this falls. Next up, we have The Vegetarian by Hong Kong. Um, I, again, I really don't know too much about this, but I do know that this is about a woman who through some means I'm not aware of, kind of turns into either like a monster or has some sort of like monstrous transformation. Um, I, I know that it is a literary novel, literary semi-horror, um, and I've heard so many people are mixed about this, and I am just so curious as to where I'm gonna land. So excited about this one. I've had it on my TBR for a long time. And finally, the last kind of novella that was on my initial TBR, that is The Deep by River Solomon. This is an Afro-futuristic fairy tale, dark fairy tale uh, novella. This is a kind of uh, take on a mermaid tale a little bit. Uh, it features characters who are the ancestors of slaves who were thrown overboard on slave ships and they have transformed into this um, underwater society, magical society. Um, and that's as far as I know about what the plot is. Um, it's a very short book. Like I said, it's a novella and I've heard incredible things about this, so I cannot wait to read it. And then I have just a couple other random selections here. I have a short story collection called Now You Know It All by Joanna Pearson. I found this in a little free library, so I don't really know what the vibe is. The book jacket says, poised on the precipice of a mystery and longing, each character in Now You Know It All also hovers on the brink of discovery and decision. All of these stories are set in small town, North Carolina. So, I mean, that sounds very interesting to me. It sounded interesting since I picked it up from a free little library and I never really had the opportunity to read it. So I was kind of thinking that as I'm kind of going through these, maybe every hour, I don't know, maybe every hour or something, every session, I don't know how many stories there are, I should probably check about that, but maybe every, hour I read a short story from here. There's 11 stories so if I could manage to fit this in my schedule that would be really great. Okay moving on to some other random notes. Okay this one. I really really want to get to this during this readathon. That is Shark Heart A Love Story by Emily Habnick. This feels perfect for this readathon because as I was flipping through 
Um, I saw that like the pages are like, there's not a lot of text. There's a lot of white space, which means that it's going to move very quickly, um, which makes it perfect for a readathon. You really feel like you're accomplishing a lot. You can get through a lot in a shorter amount of time. And also I have been dying to read this book. I'm hearing people say it's their favorite of the year and I'm just so interested. This is a speculative literary, not sci-fi exactly. I think it's more speculative than sci-fi, um, but it is a bit absurdist literary novel about a couple, a married couple who one of them is diagnosed with a very harmful illness that turns them into a shark. So it's a meditation on um, kind of losing a family member to a medical illness or um, kind of dealing with the trauma of watching a loved one go through a horrific experience. Um, but I have heard people say that it is just fantastic. One of their best, their best of the year. So I'm really just dying to get to this. I don't know where I want to prioritize it though, because on the one hand, I mean, I want to pick it up first because it is on the longer side. So it would be good to like, just get it out of the way and just like, you know, read it. But on the other hand, I also had these ones on the TBR first. So I feel like at the very least, I should read like one or two of these before moving to Shark Heart, just because I don't want to like get myself into trouble where I don't end up finishing these because I moved on to this. But I really don't know. I'm trying to leave it open for myself so I can just do and read what I want, what I feel in the moment, um, because this is a self-care readathon, you know? We should not be doing things we don't want to do. Maybe I end up not liking one of these and I want to DNF and move on to this or soft DNF, well, you know, whatever the situation. This is truly a self-care operation here that we're doing. So I would really, really, really love to get to Shark Heart. I'm, ooh, I'm dying to read it. And the final book that I will mention that is Fates and Furious by Lauren Groff. I mean, might as well talk about this here because I don't really know where else to put it. And it does kind of make sense because I am currently 50, like 55% of the way through this book. I'm listening to it on audiobook. Um, and I know that a good amount of my time over tomorrow in the course of the readathon and prior to it, I will be listening to another like large chunk of this book. Um, I might even finish it. It would be so awesome if I could get this done in the 24 hour time slot. Um, I can't guarantee that I will, but I will do my best and read as much as possible. Um, so this story follows a husband and wife. The husband um, becomes a famous playwright and really, I mean, it's a literary story about their marriage and about halfway through the book, there is a large perspective change and you basically get another view into their relationship. And it really is just about the dynamic between the two of them and how they've kind of gone through life together, but maybe not always viewing each situation through the same lens. Um, this is my first Lauren Groff novel, even though she's just, she's so popular. Um, I'm not really sure if her writing is like perfectly exactly for me. She deals a lot with the realities of life, like the harsh, gross, very non-aesthetic parts of life. Those are intermingled with beautiful prose and this kind of like very like meditation on life, I guess. Um, and the combination is jarring at times, but she's definitely a well-known writer and I am interested in a couple other of her books, but I've had this one on my TBR, so was very, very happy to get to it finally. And yeah, I'm nearly done with it. So it would be great if I could just finish it up between now and Saturday. And that would be a great addition. I'll call it part of the readathon. Okay, so that is everything that is on my TBR for the readathon. This is about self-care. This is about doing what feels right. This is about 
reading for 24 hours because I have 24 free hours where I get to spend just <laughs> like sitting on my couch reading. So I'm going to take full advantage of that time and hopefully knock a couple of these out. Good morning. It is about 9 a.m. and I've just arrived to uh, the coffee shop that I'm gonna work at for a little while. It's close to the yoga studio that I'm going to this afternoon. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a gloomy day outside actually, kind of rough. Um, but good and cozy, cozy weather for me. I like that, but a bit rough because George left for his camping trip this morning and I hope that he doesn't get rained on. That would not be a fun time. So uh, yeah, anyway, um, this morning going to do some work in a coffee shop for a while, trying to be really productive, as productive as I possibly can be for the next couple hours and then it's off to yoga. section is complete. I had a lovely morning, some nice coffee, and it is on to yoga. I'm just walking over to my studio. I'm very excited because it's going to be a very hard workout. I know yoga is not always supposed to be hard, but this one will be. Um, and that will make me very excited to just relax and do nothing the rest of the day. Hello again. Okay, so wow. I'm like really red in my cheeks. Part one of the day has been completed. Just got done with yoga. Got a little smoothie because my friend asked me to go to this new smoothie shop. It's like a fitness nutrition place next to the studio. So popped in there, got a smoothie. It's like orange strawberry. This was not in the plans, but you know what? It's a treat yourself self-care readathon. So we're doing that. But what was in the plan was a Celsius, some energy for me for this afternoon to really get going. All right, I'm heading home and then I'm going to do some cleaning, clean my house so that it's like prime coziness and then we will kick this thing off. Okay, we are down to the final moments before the readathon starts. I have, I've got my books right here. That's very important. Um, I have filled up my first water bottle. I'm trying to drink five over the course of this readathon. And I've lit my candles. I'm ready to go. Now I'm just gonna get my timer, get cozy, and let's start this thing. Okay, it is time. Um, I have my ambiance on, fall ambiance, the first of many. And I'm starting my digital clock right now. Yay, start. And I will keep track on the screen for you. I'm starting with The Cement Garden by Ian McEwan. Okay, well, that marks the end of session one. It's 5 p.m., just a little bit after 5 p.m. actually, and uh, <laughs> I've made progress on the cement garden. I am on page 107 out of, it's, it's not many, it's 153, yeah, 153. So almost read this entire book novella in the time I was sitting here, and um, So here's the thing I kind of forgot to mention, or I guess I just didn't really think about it. I said that this was a self-care 24-hour readathon, um, and that is true, but I did not mean that the themes of the book had anything to do with self-care or 
anything and like actually I gotta say this is probably not good for anybody's well-being <laughs> um yeah okay the cement garden this is a very disturbing book this is a very disturbing book and I knew it would be because on the front it says the cement garden is a disturbing book beautiful but bothersome full of raw animal instinct and passion and then on the back, it also expresses that this is a stripped down, terrifying story. You will shudder, but you will read on without, without stopping. And on the back, it says that four children live here. Through one long summer, they are free of parents, of teachers, of any form of control, and buried in the depths of the house is a secret so shocking they dare not talk about. So here's the thing. I have really enjoyed Ian McEwen in the past. I think he is so amazing at premises. I think he has such an interesting kind of like brain for stories. And then typically what I've loved about him is his writing style. I really enjoyed his writing style. Um, however, I cannot recommend this to anyone. This is... Um, I'll, <laughs> it's not, it's not good. It's really not good. Um, I am going to finish it just because I only have 50 pages left. Um, and you know, I set out to read it because it was so short for this readathon. Like that was the whole point. Um, but it's not good. It is very disturbing and it's not the st story that I thought it was going to be. It says here that it's like, possesses the suspense and chilling impact of Lord of the Flies. That is not true. It's also like not the same kind of disturbing as Lord of the Flies, I guess. This is worse and it's not like horror in any way. It's not anything like that. It's just there is quite a lot of sexual deviance um, or maybe that's not really exactly the right word. This is about teenagers who are left alone in a house over the summer and they are trying to fend for themselves. But um, yeah, no, it's not, it's not, it's not good. It's not good. But I will say that like, it does let you know very early on. Okay, okay I would not recommend this. I would not recommend this. But if for some reason anybody decides to pick it up, you know very early on what's about to go down and if you don't want to be a part of that you can just leave early but me i was like well i committed myself to reading this it's an ian McEwen book and it's very short and like the whole point of this was to read something off of my tbr shelf and i have these like collections of novellas that i'm really trying to get through so i pressed on and um no it's not good it's not good I don't even want to say anything else about it. I don't recommend this. And this is not good for my mental. Kind of a rough start to the readathon, I'm not gonna lie, but I, I did this to myself. So I'm gonna take a little break and then we'll jump back in. Okay, I am getting ready for session two, switched into a comfy sweatshirt. I'm taking a 30 minute break and my um, timing is gonna be a little bit off because I had to, unfortunately, do something right in the middle of my little session. So I'm gonna be about 15 minutes off because I had to make up for it, but that's okay. I'll just try to stay up 15 minutes later tonight um, and like still be on track. Let's mark some progress. Um, I have not drank any water yet, but I am drinking liquid death iced tea. I know this is like, Liquid Death makes water, <laughs> canned water. Um, and I, I have never really had it, but um, cause it doesn't make sense for me to buy water when I have water, you know? But they made an iced tea and I'm obsessed with the packaging. So I had to try it and it's very good. Uh, quick review, it's really like very, very, very subtle flavor. So if you do not like a super strong flavored water, then maybe this is an option. Um, 
it's just tea and agave really and it's like very very subtle yeah okay um so I'm gonna get dinner <sighs> I was kind of thinking of getting myself like chipotle or something my next thing I wanted to mention was that I have made some good progress on Fates and Furies. I was listening to it a lot today when I drove to yoga and also just was cleaning around the house. So I made some good progress. Um, I think I'm like 80% done, so that's good. Um, and what is my consensus? Uh, I don't know. It's not, it's not great, to be honest. Like, it's just long. What is my thing? My thing with long books is that I just, and it's not even that long. This is actually not even that long. This is only, this says it's only 389 pages. So yeah, but it does feel long to me. And like, I don't know if I like Lauren Groff's writing. Um, I just don't know if it's really for me. And the story is just about two people in a marriage and then you kind of get the both sides of the story and it's only semi-interesting. It is interesting in the fact that like Lauren Groff often has a lot to say about feminism and how women are treated in modern society and how they are still left out of most considerations and how really just like misogyny looks different in today's world but still very much exists um but it's not heavy-handed it's through the perspective of the character which is pretty fun but in my opinion it's just really long and only slightly interesting <laughs> like I will finish it but I don't think that this is like really moving me a lot so you know, but I've had it on my TBR shelf for so long, so I am happy to be getting to it. Oh my gosh, I was just told that George is gonna come home tonight. He is not gonna be camping uh, because the weather was too bad. So on the bright side, I will not be alone. I'm very happy that he's coming home tonight. Uh, on the less bright side, I'm not gonna be a very fun person to interact with because I have got readathons to be doing. <laughs> okay, yay, I have ordered my dinner because this is a self-care treat yourself readathon. Um, and Lord knows I really need to treat myself after this book I've been reading. <laughs> um, so ordering that and in about 10 minutes, back to round two. Truly the irony of me doing a self-care readathon and then immediately like starting it off reading this god awful book, like this monstrosity that I'm tempted to give zero out of five stars. Like, why, why? What compelled Ian McEwen to write this? I really don't know. Um, This is actually his first novel, and like, who published this? Someone was like, let's publish this? I, I really just, truly, I, I'm at a loss, I'm at a loss. Um, I don't think that I understand what I was supposed to gain from this. It's disturbing. It's not good. I will be removing this from my library <laughs> as soon as possible. And like, what do I even do now? Because Ian McEwen wrote Atonement, which I really loved. And the fact that he also wrote this, like, I just don't know. I am just like so disturbed by the subject matter. It does feature an incestuous relationship. I'm so disturbed by it and like it's kind of almost ruined atonement for me. <sighs> now this is definitely not a thing where I think that like Ian McEwen is endorsing this behavior or like doing anything other than writing about this like seriously 
disturbed situation that these children find themselves in. But, like, and when I say children, they're actually teenagers, late teenagers, but, yeah, children nonetheless. Um, <laughs> they're not off to a good start. I'm going to be done talking about this. I don't know. That's just so rough. It's so rough. Okay. Um, next up. Next up. What should we do? I am kind of, I don't know. Should I, should I read a short story? Just one? Just see how it goes? Just try it out? I might do that. What time is it? It's currently 6.35. 6.35. So theoretically I was supposed to be an hour into my session number two, but my time got all mixed up. So it's actually a little bit less than that. But, but nonetheless, we are three and a half hours into the 24 hour readathon. What I'm gonna do is read one or two short stories here and then start the vegetarian. Because these two are so short, I really should prioritize these over shark heart, even though I'm like dying to read this. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. I'm gonna read the vegetarian. And if that goes really poorly, like if, if I'm just like, <laughs> this is rough, I might need to switch to Shark Heart just because like, is this even gonna be a self-care reading vlog? It's supposed to be cozy. Okay. It's really my own fault. Like I knew the cement garden was going to be disturbing and difficult. I just didn't know, like, it's just like not even in a fun or engaging way. It seems kind of weird that I say that like, disturbing is fun, but like just what I mean is like not in a compelling way, not in a way that I feel like I gain something from the experience. If anything, I feel like I just, <laughs> I feel like I, I, I wish that I hadn't read it. Okay, time for another update. It is, it's not quite 8.30, so it hasn't, it hasn't been a very long time, but I am 50 pages into The Vegetarian and I'm riveted. Oh my gosh, I'm so interested. Um, I did not know hardly anything about this book prior to picking it up. I haven't even read the book jacket because it's a short book and I just kind of want to just jump right in. Um, but it is indeed about a woman who decides to kind of cold turkey uh, quit all types of meat. Actually, she's vegan, not vegetarian. She doesn't eat any animal products. Um, and the act of doing this is caused by some sort of strange dream that she's having. And her husband, who this is pretty interesting, the book is told through her husband's perspective, which I was not expecting. Um, and her husband is very concerned about this choice and she seems to be acting strange and um it's really as far as i can tell a metaphor for some sort of control um they try to force her to eat meat quite violently and he wants to control her in other ways so i'm not exactly sure where the metaphor is going at this point but it's clearly a metaphor about control patriarchy stuff like that but still a very interesting framing device. Um, I'm very interested because I am vegetarian. Uh, my fiance and I do not eat many animal products. Um, very, very few. We, yeah, I mean, we've been vegetarian. He's been vegetarian his whole life. I've been vegetarian uh, for nearly five years now. So yeah, interesting stuff. Because in the book they do talk like, they make all the typical vegetarian arguments that I've heard a million times, um, but it because it is like addressed to her in such a violent way, it's just, it's very, uh, it's very interesting. I don't really know 
where it's going right this very second. I'm only 50 pages in, but I love the pacing. It really gets into it like right away. And it's clear that something is going on with her, but we don't know exactly what. So I am definitely very intrigued to keep moving on here. And then I did read one short story from uh, Now You Know It All. Um, the first one, it was called Rome, and it was about a couple or a couple of friends. They're not exactly a couple who traveled to Rome. And um, I mean, kind of a slice of life. I think all these are going to be pretty like low stakes slice of life, but they're all really character driven. And um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the writing style. It was very short. Um, but I did feel like it packed a pretty meaningful punch even in the short time. So I'm interested to continue on with this, but definitely like this is going to be my priority. Um, I think George is going to be back any minute now. So I'm kind of just like waiting for him because he is bringing my Chipotle. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I'm feeling great right now, though. That's the thing. I'm very excited because I am not feeling tired at all. I'm feeling great and just, like, really excited to keep reading. Hello. Another update. It is 9.45. So what hour is that? Almost to hour seven. And I am halfway through book number two, The Vegetarian. I am really very intrigued by this. There is a lot of interesting stuff going on, interesting metaphors, interesting thoughts going on. This is not meant to be a, a spoiler uh, vlog, but um, not, I'm not going to give a spoiler, but it's kind of mystical in a way and very interesting perspectives on it the issues because what I didn't realize about this book was that it's mostly like it's all from the point of view of men talking about women and that is really adding to the themes of misogyny but through the lens of like these men that think that they're like doing a good thing I guess um and just it, it's very much about like the male gaze and kind of the just objectification of women's bodies and the kind of disassociation that many men have between like a woman as a person and like a woman as an object. And these are all themes that have been talked about at length in other places, but I really feel like the way it's done here is just, it's refreshing, it's different, it's bizarre certainly but very entertaining and also I mean like it does move fast like this is a short book you know I don't like long books and I'm like look this really can pack a punch in such a short amount of time and I have I'm a little over halfway through it so I have half a book left and I feel like I'm just very very curious as to where this is all going where is it leading um but right now I am going to take a break because George just got home with my dinner. So I'm going to take a break, maybe watch something fun. I don't know what I'm going to watch yet. Um, eat my dinner and then get back to it. So we'll see. Still feeling good. Still going strong. I have no idea how late I'm going to stay up tonight. I definitely want to read the rest of this before going to bed. I would like to accomplish that. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll start the deep tonight. I'm not sure. We shall see. I decided on trashy reality TV because this is self-care. Okay, it is 10.30. I switched to a new fall ambiance and I love this one so much. I'll, I'll give you a better view of it later. Um, oh, spilled water on myself. That's really nice. Um, <laughs> George, stop laughing. Um, okay, I am starting to feel quite tired now. So I think it's because I just finished my meal and now I am 
getting sleepy. So it's time to make a cup of tea. Um, and that will also cross off another thing on my, on my self-care prompts, which is to make a cozy hot drink. So let's do that. Let's get some caffeine. I need some caffeine. And then we will finish the vegetarian, hopefully. George is joining the readathon. Yay! Okay, another book finished. Um, it is 12.30. I'm definitely quite, quite tired now, but pretty happy because 12.30 is when I put in my schedule that I would be done for night one. I said that like, if I was feeling it, I could continue on, but, uh, no, I think I'll just be done there for the night. The end of this was a bit of a a push to get through. Um, I did really like this. I just don't think I understood it. <laughs> like, I, I understood some of it, but definitely not all of it. It's very abstract. It's very, uh, just kind of like very, I can't even think of the word that I'm trying to say right now. Um, it's not very straightforward, I guess I'll say that. Um, I did like it though. I enjoyed what it was talking about. I felt like this would be a great book. Like, I would love to talk about it. Like, this is something, you know, I could have like a college class on and have like a really smart professor who knows a lot about this book tell me what's going on here. <laughs> um, so I did like it. It's just like, it's a very cerebral book and I don't think that my brain comprehended it right now, but I enjoyed it. Um, okay, so there we go. That is two books down for the day. Very exciting. Right now I'm gonna eat my, I'm gonna eat some tiramisu that I saved from a restaurant two days ago. I was saving it to have tonight for my treat, my little give yourself a treat so I can check that off my list. Um, I did everything that I wanted to do, except I didn't do a face mask tonight. So I'll try to do that tomorrow. My plan was also to read another short story before bed, but I don't think that's gonna happen, but I will try tomorrow. And then I've got The Deep and Shark Heart. I don't know, I don't know. I really, really, really wanna read Shark Heart as I have since the beginning of all this, but I've had this on my TBR for a really long time and it's it's a novella. So I should probably just prioritize this because it is the novella, but dang it, I wanna read this so bad. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's, that's what I'm gonna leave tonight with. One of my candles over there died like permanently. It was, it's like burnt out completely, so did not survive the readathon, but we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Four hours. It's 9 a.m. A little after 9. I have my coffee. Desperately need it. Um, my plan is to start reading at about 10 a.m. I need my coffee to kick in. I have decided that I am going to start with the deep. Yeah, let's just do it. This was in the plan. Let's just do it. 
And then I was thinking, I only have an hour and a half left in my audiobook for Fates and Furies. Can I afford that hour and a half to like take a walk, pop in my audiobook, and finish this? Although the weather outside, it's quite gloomy. It looks like it might rain. Again, a really nice day for sitting inside and reading all day. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it depends if that weather's gonna hold out if I do that. But I would really like to finish this audiobook today, right now. And then we can count this as completed during the readathon. Um, even though I've been listening to it for several weeks, but I did listen to a good chunk of it yesterday. So, it counts. Then with now you know it all, I don't I don't know if I'm gonna get any further into it just because I don't feel like I have the time to spare when I really like am prioritizing these two things and fates and furies. How am I doing on my water? This is bottle number three and it's like still fairly full. So we've got to put in some work. If I go for a walk, like an hour and a half walk, I'll definitely drink an entire bottle of water during that. But we definitely got work to put in here. And I have to do a face mask. So I think I'll do a face mask at like, maybe like 11, so I can get that done. I'm going to drink my coffee, get my mind ready to go, and then we will press on. It just started pouring rain outside. Yeah. Um, very cozy reading weather. I'm gonna go check outside. Happy to be not outside in that. And I'm sure George is really grateful he decided to come home because it is, uh, it's really, really wet outside. Um, okay, reading the deep. I am liking it so far, but it's already 10.20 and I have not made much progress. Like it is clearly, my brain is not moving very fast. <laughs> I can feel it taking longer than usual. So I hope that, you know, once I fully wake up, I can move through this a little bit faster. I am liking it though, but yeah. Day two, whew, starting to feel it a little bit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, it is noon and I am just past the 100 page mark of the deep, which means I have about 60 pages left. So we're getting through it, but like, <laughs> why am I going so slow this morning? George did say he was like, yeah, the morning is not the optimal time for you. Um, so that could be it, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing the face mask now, um, which I was supposed to do last night, didn't do. And I ordered myself a lunch. I'm getting the new soup, the vegetarian autumn soup from Panera. And I'm very, very excited about it because it is raining. And so I have that ordered and yeah, I'll be very happy about that. So let's talk about the deep while I do this face mask. It's going to be a really, really beautiful sight, everyone. Okay, so The Deep by River Solomon. Um, it says that it was inspired by the hit song Clipping, comprised of David Diggs, William Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes. So I've not heard that song, but I will listen to it after I finish reading it. Um, and basically, it's like, uh, it's kind of like The Giver, but with this society of mer people who have been living in the ocean after um they they were created by the pregnant women who were slaves that were thrown overboard off of a slave ship and then they 
created a society in the deep and our main character is what's called a historian which is like you know in the book the giver where the main character is like given the memories of the people it's the same idea this one person holds all of the memories of their entire society's history because basically the idea is that the past is too painful and that like it would burden the people to the point that they couldn't move on so like one person holds all the memories but our protagonist has she's had enough she doesn't want to do it anymore because the the memories are too painful so she decides to run away and she goes to the surface so i've just gotten to the part where she's at the surface and she's met um a human so we'll see what happens there but okay mask mask is going on now okay everyone have your little laughs everyone knows what a face mask looks like okay <laughs> all right okay it's on this is staying on until for about 50 to 30 minutes okay i have just crossed at the 1 p.m mark so i have just under two hours left in this 24 hour readathon i did take about a 30 minute break for lunch to get my panera my soup um yeah the soup was just butternut squash soup but i guess i should have known that um it was still okay it was more exciting in my head but anyway i have 30 pages left so i will read this right now okay done i did it okay uh 13 48 1 48 i don't know why i've struggled so much today yesterday i read i started at 3 p.m ended at 12 30 p.m read two books and a short story today i have only been able to get through 155 pages and it's been like five hours <laughs> don't know don't know why that's been the case but yeah i guess day two of the readathon was a bit more challenging yeah okay but anyway the deep by rivers solomon um yeah i really liked this i think i'd give it a four four out of five stars um it definitely has a kind of element of like a fable or like a parable like a story that teaches a lesson um the themes that this story is dealing with are remembrance and shared history and kind of the the history of communities and the history of a people and how the the burden of the past whether it's painful or otherwise is what gives meaning to the present. I'm blabbering on, honestly, I'm kind of losing my mind. Um, uh, I feel like I also did not describe the vegetarian very well. I have kind of thought on that one a little bit more and like some of the, the, the themes kind of did solidify in my mind a little bit more after I sat with it for a minute. But, um, but yeah, The Deep, I really liked this. It was actually a very digestible, easy, quick read, despite the fact that it took me personally a long time today. I don't think that had anything to do with the book. I think this is a very accessible and interesting story. Um, I had a really good time with it and I'm really happy that I did finally read it um, after I've had it for so long. So yeah, there's that. What happens now? Well, considering the fact that it is now 1.50, I only have one hour and 10 minutes left in this readathon, which means I'm probably not going to be able to start Shark Heart. I'm probably just going to read as many short stories as I can get through. At 3 p.m., that's it. We'll call it a day. Outside, it's been raining all day, so I didn't get to walk and listen to Fates and Furies. And I'm going to Sweat House after this, which is like an infrared sauna. So after 3 p.m., I mean. Um, so that'll be the, the last kind of self-care thing that I do for this self-care readathon. 
I think I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea. I still need to drink like two bottles of water. So I'm gonna drink a lot of water. Book number three, done. That's it, there we go. It is 3 p.m. and that means 24 hours is up. Let's pop back over and wrap this thing up. <laughs> okay, there we go. We have reached the end. The end of my 24 hour self-care readathon. Um, whew. I mean, I am exhausted. I did a lot of self-care and a lot of relaxing, and yet I'm still exhausted. <laughs> I think just the nature of a 24-hour readathon, it's a lot. Um, and this was the first one that I've ever done, like, intentionally. Like, sat down and been like, I'm going to read for as long as physically possible in 24 hours. <laughs> and I definitely learned a little bit about myself. I don't know, I guess I already knew. It's kind of hard for me to read in the mornings. It's just not really my preferred time unless, you know, maybe every, you know, once in a blue moon, I'll feel like reading in the morning, but I really don't like to read in the morning. And as evidenced by the way that today went, it's, yeah, it's difficult for me. I'm really happy with overall how things went because I completed three books and I read three short stories. Um, I want to mention about the short stories because I haven't really got to talk about them. So I found this book. I, I, I don't think anybody's gonna know what this is and that's okay. I found this in a free little library and I've been really impressed with these short stories. I've read three so far and they definitely are my style of short stories. They are like they're, first of all, they're very short. They're like less than 20 pages each, which is ideal for me. Second of all, they are very like kind of, there's like some like bubbling tension and underlying dread. And there is something kind of like semi creepy about them, but it's like the kind of thing where like, you're not gonna get all the answers. They are a bit like uneasy feeling and they're, they're what I like in a short story. They do all take place or like feature the American South in some way. And you that's definitely like just a thing you can feel through the character voice. I will continue on with it. Did want to mention this because I hadn't really talked any at any length about this. Um, yeah, they're fun. They're a little bit spooky. I like that. Hey, pop it in here. It is me later. <laughs> I'm editing this video and I was like, okay, I'm actually going to talk about Fates and Furies because I did end up finishing it on Sunday. So it didn't make it into the 24 hour readathon or I didn't finish it then, but I finished it very soon after. And I went through the process of reading this. So now somebody has to hear about it because it's my channel. That's how it works. You ever read a book and you're like, was it worth it? Was, was it worth that? Was it worth it? Um, yeah, that's what I feel about this book. I've listened to it on audiobook and it still took so long. And the, the reason for that is that this is a literary fiction tour de force. Yes, that, that is true. I cannot take away from the ambition of this book and the craft of it is honestly pretty impressive. It's a very intricate story. Um, I, I I, mean, it's, it's good. It's a good piece of writing. The problem is that I know the message that it's gonna tell me and I saw it from like a mile away. So I knew where it was going, but it just took so long to get there. And it's like, you just have to wade through so much detail and so much information to get to the point. 
And like, this is very much the epitome of like, behind every great man is an even greater woman. And you know, I appreciate that message. I understand like what is being said here because it's not subtle. My issue really is that it's just such a drawn out story. And you are in the mind of the character that it's a husband and wife, and you are in the head of the husband for so long and he is not a fun character to be in the head of for that long. Like, he is a misogynist, he's a kind of egotistical, self-entitled, self-indulgent, just like, yeah, just not, just not a fun character. Um, it is impressive that Lauren Groff is able to write this character and like it does feel authentic and I totally understand what she's trying to get us to understand via this character's inner monologue. Um, it's just like, man, it just goes on for so long. This is a frequent problem I have. I'm not a long book person. I truly believe that most stories can be told in under 200 pages. Um, and it's rare that I find books that are longer that I feel like really utilize the space and time. Now, like I said, Groff is a good writer in that she is using the space in an interesting way. Like I wouldn't necessarily say that all of the information is useless. It just is very exhausting. This book takes a lot of patience and that is not something that I've been known to have. So I don't think I could really recommend this to many people. This is a literary fiction book and I think that I've I can get these themes in other more consolidated stories, um, but I did it. I did it, it was a goal, and I read it. Overall, I gave this a 3.5. Honestly, for the craft, it should probably be higher, but just like, it was a chore to get through. I'm done, that's it, but I, I finished this. Let me move on with my life. But I am just like very happy that I got to these because if you have watched any of my TBR videos, um, you know that I kept pulling these books out being like, oh, wouldn't it be so great to read these one day? So the entire point of this readathon, the reason that I wanted to do it was to be able to knock out these novellas that I had sitting on my TBR, um, as well as the short story collection. So the fact that I did it, like, I'm very, very happy with that. These two books were good. These were worth the struggle of me staying up for so long and like trying to read so much all at once. Absolutely worth it. I really, these, these both delivered exactly what I was hoping for them to deliver. This one, not so much. I would not recommend this to anyone. I actually gave this a one star on Goodreads just because like I don't I don't understand why this was written and like I really don't know the point but I think my probably truer feelings are like more like a two star because the writing is still competent. I mean at least it was like a complete story. It was a bad story, a story that I wish I had not consumed but it was complete and like put together in a cohesive way, which is more than what I can say for like the majority of my one stars. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for joining along with me in these past 24 hours and a little bit over 24 hours actually. And hey, thanks for so much if you joined along on my Instagram. I was keeping track of all of this in real time on my Instagram. So you can find my Instagram links in the description. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me. I hope that you had a good time. I hope this inspired you to treat yourself to a little bit of self-care. And I hope that you will join me again next time. Have a great day, week, month, year. I hope to see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs>